And our next presenter is Mr. Eugene Irvin. It's nice to be here with everybody. What we've done here is put together a chronology at the beginning of this presentation with an emphasis of bringing some light to some the, the compartmentalization, which is a key way in which these projects have been able to perpetuate and go through the defense and intelligence department uh, and communities for so long. Um, and we're just going to dive right into this and try to illustrate this chronology. And this is going to take us back to 1930. Um, this is the Solvay Conference on Physics in Brussels in 1930, and what you have here is really some of the world's best minds. You have Heisenberg, Bohr, Einstein, just to name a couple here, a few. And essentially what they found out at this time, um, and this is the American Association of Physics Teachers, and it was founded in 1930 for the purpose of dissemination of knowledge of physics, particularly by way of teaching. So this means this has had a fundamental impact on the future of teaching within the international community on a very fundamental and basic level. And what these guys found out at this time essentially was that their simple act of observation was having an effect on their experiments on the molecular and atomic levels. And as we go on through the presentation, we'll see how these principles have been applied to the macro levels and how it has been implemented globally. And so it's really quite interesting. And then we have this, 1950s, 60s, the CIA fesses up on UFO sightings. They say, literally, that we have been involved with many of the sightings of the saucer-shaped craft and so on. And there's some official links um, just down here for anybody to check out. Um, you got the NSA public info um, on the declassified UFO stuff there and then also the CIA stuff. And this gets into the launch of the space race and what happens. Now, it's important to go ahead and note as we move forward that we've already seen that the CIA has fessed up about UFOs in the 50s and 60s and now we have what is important to understand at the outset about DARPA. It didn't have labs, it did not focus on existing military requirements. It was separate from any other operational or organizational elements. It was explicitly chartered to be different so it could do fundamentally different things than had been done by the military service R&D organizations. The reason for this dramatic departure was that President Eisenhower and his key advisors had determined that the existing R&D system had failed to respond to the realities of all emerging national security threats embodied by the Soviet Union. This threat was manifest in a crescendo event, the launching in 1958 of the Sputnik satellite. This response, excuse me, the response to this was not only the creation of a research entity to perform research that others had not adequately pursued, but to embed the OSA organization within a newly created oversight structure reporting to the Secretary of Defense, namely the Director, Def Defense Research and Engineering, or D, D, R, and E. And it gets into more of this, but initially what we're having here is, is that we have the first launch that's acknowledged into outer space of the Sputnik satellite, and DARPA is quickly formed by Eisenhower and then responds in this new structure in the Defense Department itself. And this is Sputnik, um, the first artificial satellite that was launched in, in 1957. And essentially what we're going to look at here is the element of AI coming in at this point and then beginning to take an influence. And we're going to see that directly related in the following information. So, um, and this is very important to know. This is something that I have written here in order to give somebody a, a frame of reference for how the classification of documents has been, um, how these documents have been written within the defense and intelligence community. and. This is very important for anybody to understand when they're reviewing these documents and trying to take them into the proper context. And this is, um, it says, the use of analogous imagery and semantics has been used throughout the closely related communities of defense, intelligence, and academia for decades. There are several contexts from which to draw. This means that documents and or files have several contexts incorporated into the same work body. This is a cryptological system intended to prevent unintended personnel from ascertaining the contents. In order to retrieve and understand the meaning of these different methods of security classification, 
one must have a repertoire that contains a broad spectrum of perspectives from which is derived a contextual message. To fully equate the information, one must have an understanding of art, math, history, and science, as well as a comprehensive knowledge of languages. Now, this is something that we're giving away to all, anybody who will see this. And so the inside joke is, um, it's kind of like the fall of the cabal type of event. I mean, to put things in perspective where we are today, we have the Bilderberg meeting today going on, which the, the main emphasis of that meeting with these world's highest leaders um, in, the, in the corporate infrastructure, which of course plays out to the military and so on, they're meeting about artificial intelligence today, right now, and we have the beginning tomorrow of a national exercise with Special Forces troops, Jade Helm, and it's very interesting to see how those things have lined up on this timeline in this context. And so in the uppermost echelons, there are inside jokes amongst agents and operatives, which also serve as a key of function to unlock the true and intended idea which is represented therein. Only in the works of the highest order are the intended recipients acknowledged within, and that can mean a many different things. Um, and there's many examples of which to illustrate that from, but the real inside joke is today is this is for everyone, and that is why we are giving this away today, because this is a, you know, we're dealing with things that are tangible on the quantum level that become physical for us, and it gives us an example of how to to express these things on, on, on a broader level. What you have here is, is the AI coming in. Um, this is an example of URLs for human interaction from the open archives. Um, these, this is another, uh, excuse me there, um, example of how they will classify things, even in the domain of the, of the, uh, inter of the website itself, where you see the AI here. Um, and this was online Okay, less than two, two and a half years really after the launch of the first satellite into space, you have 1960, January 1st. These, the first document here goes back to 1952, and so what that tells us is that the documents had been there, they approved them for public release, and they put them on a server that was online in 1960. That in and of itself rewrites history from the traditional academic and orthodox accepted viewpoint in that there was no such, be such thing as online anything in 1960. This is before Kennedy was even killed. And so we basically have this meeting of AI, and this picture here has come from DARPA, um, and an off-planet source, and you kind of have a, um, an undersea aspect here with this helmet that Bobby actually pointed that out last night. It's very true because we do get into the underground and undersea bases as well, um, and that's a whole other discussion. But, you know, we look at this timeline and we see that the USSR launches Sputnik, first artificial satellite, and these documents are classified in this method in which they're speaking in analogous form, okay? And so what does this say? You have the information flow and large communication nets, but you get down here and you have man-computer communication. It's just like the picture that we just saw, and so this goes on, and it's the whole idea is this has been incorporated into the global communications infrastructure, and it has a direct relationship with the consciousness of individuals on this planet. And so moving right along, um, this is a historic document from, you know, about five months before JFK was actually killed. Um, this is from, let's see, April of 1963, and this is the members and affiliates of the Intergalactic Computer Network. And if we look at the first paragraph here, we can see that there's a very pressing sense of urgency in this document coming from this gentleman here, um, and this is the members and affiliates of the Intergalactic Computer Network, and it says, first, I apologize humbly for having to postpone the meeting scheduled for the 3rd May 1965 in Palo Alto. The ARPA Command and Control Research Offices has just been assigned a new task that must be activated immediately, and I must, the, must devote the whole of the coming week to it. So that sets the context for the rest of this document and the things that we're going to see after this. And you can understand here that it is very, very, very Honey, pressing. He's having a seizure. seizure. Oh. Who is it? He's having a seizure. Okay, okay. Oh, my okay. Yeah. 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 It's okay. Should be fine.